drawer over in Jakarta. In it you'll find things you can't find anywhere else. But you can forget about finding his score on the internet. And that's no good for him, his business, and those of us looking for little Tembang Sunda to round out our collection. So let's get him connected. Because an internet with Lian is just a way better internet. The more we connect, the better it gets. HSBC Premier presents Personal Economy Summit, Your Wealth and Beyond, in partnership with CNBC TV 18, this September in Mumbai. स्वच्छ पानी तो आपने पी लिया लेकिन यहाँ स्वच्छता रखना किसकी जिम्मेदारी है चिप्स तो इन्होंने खाया पर यह खाली पैकेट किसकी जिम्मेदारी है सही सामान तो मिल गया और खाली पैकेट यह किसकी जिम्मेदारी है समझदार ग्राहक न सिर्फ सही सामान खरीदता है बल्कि अपने कचरे का सही निपटान भी करता है आप भी समझदार ग्राहक बनिए और स्वच्छ भारत का सपना सच कीजिए तो आपके पास आईसीआईसी बैंक अकाउंट हो या ना हो या चाहे बैंक अकाउंट ही ना हो मूवी टिकट बुकिंग बिल स्प्लिटिंग बिल पेमेंट जैसे कोई भी ऑनलाइन ट्रांजैक्शन करने के लिए डोंट टेक लोड करो आईसीआईसी बैंक पॉकेट्स डाउनलोड पॉकेट्स बाय आईसीआईसी बैंक चार फुट चार दीवार पे प्यार का सितार दीवार पे मेहमान भी कलाकार दीवार पे इसलिए इजी क्लीन पेंट विद क्रॉस लिंकिंग पॉलिमर्स दीवार पे नदार Only beautiful walls. Get set for an exciting test of endurance. Fantastic! That's a goal. Tata Crucible, the corporate quiz is back. Coming soon to your city. A knowledge initiative by the Tata Group. Leadership with trust. TV partner, CNBC TV 18. Presented by Tata Leadership with Trust. Konsa floor? Italian marble. Oh no, flat. Three BHK, ma'am. Ghar bechne ka boot sawar. List ke jee 99 acres par aur paye genuine bios. This is TV 18, and you're watching CNBC TV 18. The firm brought to you by Bandhan Bank. Aapka bhala, aap sab ki bhalai. And Century Laminates. My design, my style. The firm, India's only show on corporate law, tax, and audit matters. There's a new world war being fought on our computers, phones, and all the fancy gadgetry that controls manufacturing plants, information highways, and government systems. companies consumers governments we are all warriors in the war against cyber crime hello and welcome to the firm last year us corporations lost 400 billion dollars to cyber attacks the numbers are mind boggling the vulnerability is terrifying and the consequences often unimaginable so this week the firm talks to security experts hackers chief information officers and lawyers to find out if india inc is prepared to fight this new battle sony ebay target home depot jp morgan neiman marcus yahoo mail at&t ups and google they're all victims of cyber attacks and that's just in 2014 the washington post says that in 2013 federal agents notified 3000 us companies that their computer systems had been hacked information technology and security experts say everything is at risk financial data customer data intellectual property and often the attackers are insiders 
we've seen details of credit cards being stolen we've seen uh, uh, user information getting stolen we've seen user names and passwords getting stolen uh, we've seen various different cases uh, that have been happening across the globe in various different areas not just these are not just consumer facing but even within the corporates within the organizations we've seen cases where because of uh, you know hacker intrusions uh, we've seen some very valuable uh, critical mission critical kind of information getting leaked out into the public or going into the hands of the competition and so on and so forth we saw 300 million variants of malware uh, written last year which basically means that around a million per day uh, this is a large number of malwares which the attackers are using to exploit into the uh, network and the infrastructure of businesses. The type of attacks, the, the type of issues, uh, you know, like probably there is a similarity to, to a virus or a pandemic that, uh, you know, when it explodes, when, you know, it impacts everyone. It's a constantly mutating virus. Sahir Hidayatullah is an ethical hacker and helps companies protect themselves. He says that from widespread phishing attacks or emails that fool people into parting with their private data, hackers have now moved on to more targeted attacks. If you think about how people used to get hacked just a few years ago, they would be targeting you and me, your credit card, my healthcare information for identity theft. That has completely changed. That's now bottom of the barrel stuff. The really serious stuff is where they're targeting companies directly. They're not saying, okay, I'll take 10,000 rupees out of 500 people's accounts. They're saying, you know what? Let's break into one bank, get access to the ATM network, and let's spit out a few million dollars. Or many million dollars. In cybercrime, data breaches are the most common form of attack. Last year, hackers accessed login information for 233 million customer accounts at eBay, one of the world's biggest online selling platforms. Soon after, JP Morgan Chase, the largest American bank with a $250 million cybersecurity budget, suffered a widespread attack on its servers that affected 76 million households and 7 million small business accounts. JP Morgan says that the attackers weren't able to get their hands on sensitive data like social security numbers, account numbers and passwords. But IT expert Pranesh Prakash says that in this day and age of online transactions, even basic contact information can be easily exploited. You can do a lot just by having access to a, a person's, uh, you know, uh, birth date. Uh, you can do a lot by having access to, uh, a, you know, uh, to a person's mother's maiden name and, and things like that because uh, in a few ways. One, these kinds of uh, information are, are often used in financial transactions as well. Uh, they are uh, often, uh, you know, uh, proof that you are you. Okay, when you are talking with a banking representative, say, uh, for instance, the birth date, as long as you have, uh, you know, knowledge of a person's PAN number and the knowledge of that person's birth date, then even uh, uh, an income tax return that is password protected, uh, you can have access to that. Sensitive data is even more at risk. At American retailer Home Depot, 56 million customer accounts were reportedly hacked and financial data stolen. Media reports suggest that it cost the company $62 million and banks another $90 million to replace the debit and credit cards. Neyman Marcus, Staples, UPS and many others have been victims of similar attacks. And then there's extortion. At Domino's Pizza, hackers stole personal records of 600,000 users. The attackers held the data for ransom by publicly threatening the company on Twitter to pay up 30,000 euros. The number of days uh, that a hacker can be in, in any of the premises is, is now longer than what we saw before. So they are in the network looking into the stuff that they need, uh, intellectual property, it could be identities, uh, and, and uh, you know, the campaign is much longer and targeted rather than just going for, uh, you know, a random kind of uh, data. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, businesses 
uh, may not even know that hackers are already prevalent into their network and they're looking into something very sensitive. Last year, a North Korean group called Guardians of Peace hacked into Sony Pictures, one of the largest film studios in Hollywood. The attackers destroyed systems and stole large quantities of employee data, confidential communications and commercial data. They frightened Sony into cancelling the release of its film The Interview about an attempted assassination of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The FBI said that the North Korean government was responsible for the attack. In May this year, the US Justice Department filed criminal charges against five hackers in the Chinese military accusing them of stealing trade secrets from six American companies including Alcoa, US Steel and Westinghouse Electric. The cyber theft of intellectual property is now a cross-border issue for companies across the globe. A large pharma company, obviously names not taken, was actually hacked and we watched firsthand as Chinese malware and Chinese hackers tried to move through their network towards their lab tissue culture systems and that information was flowing back out to a Chinese dump site. This is something that we've seen time and time again. There are two types of attackers. You have, um, for, for, for want of you know, locking someone down to a geography, you've got the Eastern European hackers who are more interested in you know, financial motive. And then you've got the Chinese hackers who are usually more after intellectual property theft. I once saw this interesting cable uh, from the US diplomatic cables that were leaked by WikiLeaks uh, where a German businessman was complaining how uh, industrial espionage from, from France was a much greater uh, threat to his business than uh, things like, uh, you know, the threat of, of IP, you know, violators and, uh, in, in China. Financial data, intellectual property, even manufacturing systems have been hacked into. In 2010, in Iran, a piece of code called Stuxnet succeeded in shutting down several centrifuges in a uranium enrichment facility. In a world where everything is connected and hackers have state support, nothing is safe. They could be taking over the entire set of assets. So the, if, if, if an organization has implemented IoT in its manufacturing plant or, or in its, uh, uh, say, warehouse or, its, uh, or in its inventory go-downs, and if they are all connected with Internet of Things, anybody who is hacking in to those networks could be completely taking the ownership or the control of those uh, systems that are now enabled in them and uh, they could be changing or altering those uh, you know, various different things, uh, make them work in a completely different manner, uh, make them behave very erratically, uh, which would cause uh, then material damage, physical damage for the organization. So you now know the size and the scale of the problem and its constantly changing nature. Hacking is illegal everywhere in the world. But that's not much of a deterrent, is it? So the question is, how are companies across the world coping? Last year, 60% of all attacks on corporations reportedly took place in the US. But that's probably because US law mandates that companies report data breaches where customer data has been stolen. Many countries, including the EU, now have data breach reporting laws as well. So disclosures is the first step. The next is laws that protect data. Lisa Soto is a reputed lawyer and partner at Hunton and Williams. She specializes in cybercrime matters and has advised various governments around the world on data security and breach notification laws. She says that the US has a plethora of laws but they are all fighting yesterday's battle. Our clients ask us all the time if we could pl provide the, the playbook. What is the roadmap for securing data? What, what playbook should they follow for uh, data security? And unfortunately, the answer is there's no magic potion. There is no playbook. So what we have in the United States is really a hodgepodge of laws. We have financial security laws. We have health care uh, security requirements. And then as a general security requirement, the Federal Trade Commission requires that we have 
reasonable security in place to protect data. And of course, the, the term reasonable is a bit of a moving target because what's reasonable today may, may be less than reasonable tomorrow as, as the cyber criminals become more and more sophisticated and they figure out how to get past uh, certain security measures that are in place. So we do not have a single rule of thumb. We have rules at the federal level and at the state level, and it is unfortunately um, a, a, a bit of a melange uh, of, of rules rather than a single roadmap to follow. In 2013, one of the biggest retail chains in the US, Target's payment system was infected with malware. Attackers stole credit card information of 17 million customers. The attack cost Target $148 million and banks lost $200 million. Target's CEO resigned, government investigations were launched and the company had to pay $10 million to settle a class action lawsuit brought by consumers. More recently, Home Depot and Ashley Madison have been sued by customers for failing to protect their data. After last year's cyber attack, Sony faced employee lawsuits for not doing enough to protect their data. Inadequate data protection can also prompt government enforcement actions. The government does it all the time, and I should say governments, because uh, in the United States we are, uh, we are faced with enforcement actions by the Federal Trade Commission at the federal level, uh, possibly the Department of Health and Human Services with respect to health data and other federal agencies where we have uh, uh, compromises of data. Um, we also, in, in pri private uh, industry, are faced with uh, attorney general actions. So the states are very active and we may be faced with multiple actions by attorneys general if we fail to protect data. There's a group known as the Multi-State Task Force and this is a group comprised of uh, many state attorney generals. They come together and they will investigate uh, an issue if there is a breach of, of data and they may well bring a, a joint enforcement action. The costs, the class action litigation and the government enforcement action, that's just half the story. Reputational damage can be equally crippling. Many American companies are now adding cybersecurity experts to their boards and senior management. But what about India Inc? Well, after the break, our ethical hacker Sahir has some very interesting experiences to share. Are we where we want to be? Or yet to get there? Are we counting? Possibilities or exploring unseen opportunities? Are we here to witness the change or be the change? At HCL, it is a journey where one thing leads to another. It is a journey of touching people with possibilities. HCL, we touch lives. Mary Kelsey Snow White best. See this? Very nice. Hmm. In our kitchen, there is only flat red. Ma'am, I'll tell you something. You can't do it. I know you like purple. Here. No, honey. After the copper, there's nothing else. May I suggest group, please? American walnut. That's it. Rouge. Brilliant. What is this? American walnut. Help! I can help! Huh? See this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you want to play at home. You can get your own ideas. Century Lab Nails. My design, my style. We are the readers, we're the learners, we're the teachers, the story collectors, and the page turners. Like my father before me, and his father before him. We are the readers, from dusk to dawn, in the dark I'm born. Easy in every chair. We read, we share, we flirt, we dare To brighten the night with glowing lights We are the readers for today and forever We are the readers We are the readers Yes, we're the readers Kindle for the love of reading Masterpreneur, एक ऐसा platform जो आपके business को एक नई पहचान दिलाएगा। 
गाइडेंस हो या फंडिंग हम आपके बिजनेस को ले जाएंगे नेक्स्ट लेवल पर यहाँ आप शोकेस करेंगे अपना आइडिया पूरे इंडिया के सामने यदि आपके बिजनेस में है दम तो हम करेंगे उसे फंड तो शुरू करिए कामयाबी का एक नया सफर बनिए ऑन्टरप्रेनियर ऐसी मास्टर प्रेनियर सोना ग्रुप प्रेजेंट सी एन पी सी आवाज मास्टर प्रेन्योर इंडिया सीजन थ्री प्रेजेंटेड बाय सोना ग्रुप ड्राइविंग टूमोरो फंडिंग एंड इंक्यूबेशन पार्टनर विल ग्रो इनोवेशन तो आपके पास आईसीआईसी बैंक अकाउंट हो या ना हो या चाहे बैंक अकाउंट ही ना हो मूवी टिकट बुकिंग बिल स्प्लिटिंग बिल पेमेंट जैसे कोई भी ऑनलाइन ट्रांजैक्शन करने के लिए डोंट टेक लोड करो आईसीआईसी बैंक पॉकेट्स डाउनलोड पॉकेट्स बाय आईसीआईसी बैंक चेस्ट चौवालीस इंच चौवालीस इंच शोल्डर अठारह अठारह पॉकेट कौन सी साइड साउथ वेस्ट फेसिंग साउथ वेस्ट कौन सा फ्लोर इटालियन मार्बल ओह नो फ्लैट थ्री बी एच के मैम इंटरेस्टेड घर बेचने का भूत सवार लिस्ट कीजिए नाइनटी नाइन एक पर और पाइए जेनुइन बायोस Welcome back. You're watching a special edition of the Firm on Cyber Crime. There's little data on cyber attacks on Indian companies. The issue rarely makes headlines, but it is slowly gaining traction in boardrooms, especially in bank boardrooms, because India's financial services industry is a prime target. RBI says that 12.6 billion dollars worth of cyber fraud cases were reported last year. Amit Sethi, the chief information officer at Axis Bank, contends that the frequency and magnitude of attacks has gone up in the last five years, and that's led him to change his security strategy. Two uh, very important things are happening. Uh, the original strategy used to be defense only, so build a perimeter firewall, build your whole strategy around a defensive mechanism. That has changed now, so it's moving more to what we call as predictive. and responsive mechanism so we are able to predict on the basis of certain traffic patterns or on the basis of what we hear from the underground the dark web about what is the likelihood of the attack so we are getting into predictive and when we see the you know traffic increase or an attack happening have an immediate response so responsiveness has increased at a very fast so these are the two new additions which have happened over last few years and few months over and about the defensive strategy It's this change in strategy that's made ethical hackers like Sahir Hidayatullah much sought after. Sahir helps Indian companies prevent and counter hack attacks and he has some interesting stories to tell. Fortune 50 CEO of an Indian company received an email purportedly from a person who used to write articles on him from a news publication. Once again that email had a virus attached to it and that that virus when it was analyzed was capable of switching on the audio uh, the microphone on his computer turning on the camera downloading excel word documents recording the keystrokes recording the screen pretty much everything the hacker could want to do if he was sitting in front of that system and you must understand the cost to the attacker is minimal for him to send this out he could just make a list of all the top executives in india and fire that same thing out and it's basically the cost of sending an email in another instance that sahir shared hackers infiltrated a company's systems by sending a well crafted spear phishing email to an executive assistant of a senior executive in a company once in they accessed the system for months they were able to move from system to system and over a period of months they gained access to what they wanted to and then siphoning it off was a simple matter we were able to luckily in that case 
figure out that something was wrong because there was a they, they misused the password out of office hours and for some reason this lady received some sort of an alert which said you tried to log in last night at three in the morning and that's how the whole incident kind of started unraveling and once we got in we realized we can't just shut these guys down if we just close off her her access they'll realize that we figured out they're there and they might have five other back doors so it was really important that we kept them going so we in fact built an elaborate deception around what information they were getting we drew them away from the real information but kept them busy while we could figure out and dimension the incident and finally then shut them down cleanly one weekend so i think the operative takeaway in that is you don't need to have the strongest you know perimeter firewall it's not going to help you if somebody's just going to give up their username and password Cybercrime has seen a 350% increase in India and yet there's rarely news of an attack on an Indian company. That's because India has no law that requires companies to report hacking attacks or data breaches. There have been a number of instances where very large Indian companies have been hit by targeted attacks. They've not made the news for various reasons including, you know, the lack of breach reporting laws that we have here. But there have been serious incidents in fact if you look over any um, advanced persistent threat report of the last few years you'll usually find india figures in one of the top 5 targets if you see there is no mandatory reporting means lesser uh, crimes are reported and the indices which are uh, you know projected to uh, from surveys or research may not give the real picture because the the, the current threats may be even far more than what they are being projected and uh, because there is less uh, reporting there is less investigation there is less uh, tracking of offenses and as a result less prosecution and convictions karnika seth is a well known lawyer specializing in cyber crime matters she has also advised the government on matters of cyber security karnika says that india is woefully under equipped well uh, our, our current IT system and the IT law uh, and the legal framework the machinery or the infrastructure even the manpower which handles this kind of investigations is certainly uh, way behind what we we should be now because i feel the awareness levels are very low and uh, because of that uh, the cyber criminals find it as a haven in the year 2000 the indian parliament passed its first cyber law the information technology act section 66 of the act makes hacking illegal section 43a provides for compensation to victims of data breach and section 72a imposes criminal liability on a person who discloses confidential information every uh, customer's uh, you know personal information taken should be protected to to an extent which which ensures reasonable security practices have been adopted by that corporation or a company and uh, how many co corporations really really follow this is what uh, is a big challenge today 43a uh, which is the provision relating to data protection and is the only provision really relating to data protection uh as as we understand it uh is is grossly inadequate the, the one example of of why it's inadequate is that it doesn't really have a uh, you know allow the capability uh, for so much to action by the government meaning uh, it it in essence uh envisages complaints uh for by by victims for claiming this kind of compensation which very often does not happen and uh and the kind of negligence that has to be shown well it's it's unclear and and what we see is that despite it being many years since this provision was introduced i don't know of a single case where it's actually been used and it's not as though uh india has been a haven for data security no it hasn't there have been dozens of data breaches so why hasn't this provision been used since companies rarely disclose if they've been attacked consumers despite the legal provisions have little opportunity to take action and class action is a rarity here in india on the other hand catching and prosecuting hackers is no easy job either
But as the problem grows, so has the awareness. Now, government intelligence agencies, such as the National Technical Research Organization, that's NTRO, and the Computer Emergency Response Team, CERT, are also coming to the aid of Indian business. We have seen agencies like that, you know, step in now. They are extremely collaborative. Where extreme information exchange is happening between agencies and uh, we see them as uh, active participants in both prevention and detection of, of, of these kind of things. So yes, they are actually playing quite an important role in this. There's no point having the laws if we don't have the teeth to enforce them or the, the investigative capabilities to enforce them. Right now it's difficult enough for our police to deal with the type of cybercrime that we see daily. If you're talking about them dealing with, um, you know, a really advanced gang, that's difficult. There have been victories and there are quite a few, uh, you know, officers who have done a lot of work and are very knowledgeable on the subject, but unfortunately they're few and far between. But that's not a problem unique to India. Constantly changing technology has helped hackers stay one step ahead of investigating authorities everywhere. Finding them is tough, prosecuting them even tougher. Cyber criminals are really operating in a, in a space that is uh, above jurisdictional lines or beyond jurisdictional lines. So finding them, identifying them when they're talented enough to leave very few footprints uh, after they've been in a system is a huge challenge. So identifying the attackers and then bringing them to justice um, is really a very very difficult task tracking is definitely possible we are able to track them uh, down to the countries of origination or the place from where the attack has originated in terms of prosecution because it involves cross-border uh, you need to involve government agencies I believe that's one area of improvement where you know all of us need to work together where we need to have better all the international community has to have a better mechanism of prosecution for cross-border I think most of the countries are, are struggling with that and I hope you know soon we will see some work and some outcome there is no cyber crime convention so whether the cross-border crimes could be easily investigated because MLAT system which we currently follow the mutual legal assistance treaty system with certain countries is also very slow and many times when we look for information from the other uh, authority in the other country it could take six months or even one year uh, what to talk of foreign countries even forensic reports you know at times forensic reports which we are uh, in uh, in fact domestically procuring from government or other agencies could also take very long so because of that the uh, backlog of cases doesn't get uh, you know decided very quickly and we are only endeavoring you know now, right now to, uh, to create cyber awareness and to create cyber awareness not just in the general masses but even law enforcement and uh, police officers trainings and uh, conducting uh, members of judiciary and their trainings well as is evident we are struggling to keep up it's not just the legal and enforcement architecture or better laws to protect customer data cybercrime is forcing companies everywhere to rework security and governance systems. Is that conversation happening in Indian boardrooms? The awareness over the last few years, if you look, and look at India Inc. in gen general and government, it's increased tremendously. And that has happened also because of the kind of attacks that we are seeing. And actually, you know, the uh, your digital property is becoming the face for most of the companies. And if that gets attacked, it is both not only a reputation risk, it could actually, uh, you know, risk uh, release of sensitive data outside. So everyone is taking taking it extremely seriously. Over the last two years especially I have seen that become as an important part of their strategy and board level reviews. So you know the top management of the company is also extremely involved in these things. The boards do realize that security is an issue, you know, uh, securing their assets, IT assets and information assets are critical to them. But do they have all the relevant knowledge from a technology perspective, uh, from the perspective of what kind of impact it can have for the business continuity planning? or probably disaster recovery management and so on and so forth. Uh, the awareness levels would, uh, I would uh, you know, guess, is, is still pretty average is what I would say, at least in the Indian context. I'll end where I started. Last year, US corporations lost $400 billion to cybercrime. India Inc., beware. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next week. The Firm, India's only show on corporate law, tax and audit matters.